Scenario C mimics the business-as-usual approach described for Scenario B, except that the intended growth area is expanded south toward Mecklenburg County and east toward Rowan County to encourage increased economic development in the planning area. Land included in the expanded growth area is prioritized for non-residential uses that bring more jobs to the community. The concept map, pictured here, depicts preferred development types, locations, patterns, styles, and intensities for the planning area assuming full build-out of Scenario C. Some areas on the map reflect what currently exists today, some are more aspirational in nature, and others are a mix of what exists today and what could be in the future. Impervious surface restrictions in the Cottle Creek watershed, currently capped at 12% built-upon area, may limit certain types of development, or at least their development intensities. However, an exception to the rule exists in the town's Unified Development Ordinances, the UDO, whereby up to 10% of the watershed balance, or 1,000 acres, may develop using up to 70% built upon area if the project is non-residential in nature. Scenario C assumes all development targeted for the watershed is non-residential and uses this provision in the UDO. For reference, impervious surfaces, roads, parking lots, building rooftops, etc., interfere with the ability of rainwater to soak into the ground, and stormwater runoff from a rain event travels quickly across impervious surfaces, picking up pollutants and carrying them to the local stormwater collection system, or sometimes directly into nearby lakes or rivers. The simultaneous increase in both water quantity and suspended water pollutants may lead to stream erosion or degraded water quality. The graphic on the slide depicts the relationship between groundwater infiltration and impervious surface, where a decrease in groundwater infiltration and thus an increase in runoff is associated with increasing impervious surface percentages. Viewers are encouraged to watch the video for Scenario B to learn more about the basic concepts, rules, and principles that are also emphasized in Scenario C. That is, low-density suburban development patterns and intensities, significant tree loss, farmland lost to new development, limited home choices, and reliance on the automobile to meet residents' most pressing daily travel needs. The remainder of this video will focus on key differences between Scenarios B and C. In Scenario C, new non-residential development, primarily industrial in nature, follows the latest trends and design principles for manufacturing or research, focused on excellence, efficiency, and innovation that helps make Mooresville an attractive location for new regional, national, or international business investments target industries for the new job centers, tap into the community's highly skilled and experienced workforce for precision engineering and manufacturing. An intended growth area was delineated in CommunityViz for each scenario, which tested multiple growth targets for the Mooresville planning area. Future development would be focused in areas identified in dark red on the map using rules, policies, or requirements presented in the new Mooresville Tomorrow Comprehensive Plan and or the Town of Mooresville United Development's Unified Development Ordinance. Large scale or intense development would be discouraged in areas identified as green on the map using other rules, policies, and requirements in the Comprehensive Plan or Unified Development Ordinance. Scenario C expands the intended growth area presented in Scenario B southward toward Mecklenburg County and east toward Rowan County to encourage increased economic development in the planning area. Land included in the expanded growth area is prioritized for non-residential uses that bring more jobs to the community. Infrastructure will need to expand outward even further than Scenario B to support new growth and development located further away from existing service areas. 
Growth forecasted for the planning area in Scenario C was allocated to grid cells using a computer software and the list of pipeline projects identified earlier in this presentation. White dots on the map represent the pipeline development inventory for Scenario A. Basically, we cannot ignore projects that are, that are already approved by the town's board of commissioners in any of the alternative scenarios, B through E. Black dots on the map represent either one new development unit or one new square foot of non-residential development allocated to the planning area between 2024 and 2040 under the rules and preferences specifically for Scenario C. The amount of land disturbed by new development, residential and non-residential combined, for Scenario C is 10.6% of the total planning area, which represents an area approximately 22 times larger than downtown Mooresville. The project team for the Mooresville Tomorrow Comprehensive Plan calculated the impacts for 10 indicators, new residents, new employees, new students, new police officers, new firefighters, new park acres, new greenways, new water demand, new sewer demand, and new solid waste demand associated with future growth and development patterns depicted on the two maps presented for Scenario C on the previous slide. Information for each of the 10 indicators is presented under three conditions. Existing conditions, future year conditions for the full planning area, and future year conditions for town limits only. You can learn more about the different reporting geographies used for the new comprehensive plan, town limits, extraterritorial jurisdiction, areas of influence, and full planning area by reading the introduction chapter on the existing conditions tab of our project website www.mooresville-tomorrow.com Please visit the same existing conditions tab on the project website for our book report series which present existing conditions and emerging trends for the full planning area. Separate reports are available for environment, land use, infrastructure, market conditions, and a review of existing town policies and ordinances. The first column of the data in the summary poster for Scenario C represents existing conditions observed for each indicator in the full planning area. The second column of data in the summary poster for Scenario C represents future year conditions, or 2040, expected for each indicator in this case, the data is reported for the full planning area. And the third column of data in the summary poster for Scenario C also represents future year conditions, 2040, expected for each indicator. However, in this case, the data is reported for the town limits only. Governments have certain responsibilities to construct, operate, maintain, and replace community facilities and services or infrastructure to keep pace with existing and future year development patterns. Some infrastructure categories are planned and funded solely by the town of Mooresville, while others are provided by Iredell County, the Mooresville Graded School District, the Iredell Statesville School District, the State of North Carolina, private utility companies or other partners. In some cases, private developers build certain infrastructure, such as streets, water lines, sewer lines, parks, public spaces, etc., to serve their newly developed neighborhoods, employment centers, shopping centers, etc. And they'll dedicate it to the town, Iredell County, or NCDOT when the project is complete. The type location and capacity of infrastructure in the community, its service delivery, are critical to the town's ability to grow and develop in accordance with the concept map presented earlier for Scenario C. Service delivery is also critical for managing the cost and timing of needed improvements, which can dramatically impact property owners with increased taxes if expenditures are not well planned and well funded in future year capital and operating budgets. 
The information presented over the next few slides approximates the demand for new facilities and services generated by the type, location, pattern, mix, and intensity of development envisioned for the planning area. Data is reported for five categories, police protection, fire protection, parks, and public spaces, sewer service, and water service. This information will be considered again during a detailed cost of services study that will be prepared in the coming months to accompany the new Mooresville Tomorrow Comprehensive Plan. Information generated in the cost of services study for expected revenues, expected expenditures, capital needs, and potential return on investment, that is revenues versus expenditures, will allow stakeholders the opportunity to make more informed decisions about their future. Continued development away from existing police resources will stretch the department, which will necessitate three new police annex buildings, all marked with a red asterisk on the map, somewhere in the eastern portion of town limits. 98 new patrol vehicles will also be needed to keep pace with the number of new officers hired to match population growth. Three new fire stations, Station 7 in the Langtree area, Station 8 near the new Exit 38 Activity Center proposed on Interstate 77, and Station 9 near the new industrial area targeted along NC Highway 3, will be needed to serve future development and maintain minimum fire suppression and response time standards. All three locations are marked with a white asterisk on the map. Additional staff and equipment would also be needed at existing stations to serve new development types and intensities. A significant number of new parks are proposed to serve an expanding development footprint. The size, location, and design of parks would vary and support a hierarchy of regional parks serving all residents of Mooresville, community parks serving large areas of the community, neighborhood parks serving surrounding neighborhoods, and public spaces and activity centers designed as plazas, cafes, and attractive streets for walking. Many of the parks or public spaces proposed in the activity centers would be built by developers as a condition of approval for their projects. An enormous increase to the existing sewer service area, generally the town limits, would be needed in all directions, but especially south and east, to serve the intended growth area for Scenario C. The footprint of the potential service area would more than double. However, the timing and location of system expansion would be influenced by the distribution of future growth and development depicted on the growth allocation maps presented earlier. Similarly, an enormous increase to the existing water service area, generally town limits, would also be needed in all directions, but especially south and east, to serve the intended growth area for Scenario C. The footprint of the potential service area would more than double. However, the timing and location of system expansion would be influenced by the distribution of future growth and development as depicted on the growth allocation maps presented earlier. This concludes our brief overview of Scenario C, which is being considered for the Mooresville Tomorrow Comprehensive Plan. Remember to click on the link in our story map to review all eight presentation boards that were created to summarize key aspects of the scenario in more detail. These are the same presentation boards that we displayed at the four in-person events held in late August. Please contact David Cole at the Mooresville Planning Department with any questions. Thank you.